A quick note before we begin this week's episode. We are on the road traveling to HHN this week, so we decided to open the Patreon vault so that you guys could have an episode this week. Um, it feels very new, though, because it's the three of us. It's me, Mark, and Tommy, but it's actually from last Halloween, 2023, and it's loaded with good, awesome, spooky season racks. Just wanted to give you guys a little context. Um, none of you have heard this. We only had, like, two patrons, so... <laughs> A lot more people listen to the free show, so it will be like having a brand new free show um, with the three of us together. So without further ado, the Matt and Mark Horror Show rolls on with nine more spooky wrecks for spooky season. Again, we're going to be doing this all month long. It's the Matt and Mark Horror Show talking nothing but horror. So strap in as we take you into the Wayback Machine to Halloween 2023. We'll tear your soul apart. Monster Squad. What is Welcome up, fellas? Aboard. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me on the ship. I'm glad to be back. Fuck yeah. We are glad it's to have you back. Nice Mark back. is repping the Mountain Dew. What's this flavor? Is this a Halloween flavor? This is the Halloween flavor. It says limited edition 2022. So I hope these don't expire. <laughs> <laughs> the halfway through the you show, I old, said that old sugar yeah. syrup. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like wine, dude. It's a good year, right? It's a good year. Yeah, 2022. That's Mountain a Dew. good year, I think. What's yeah. the flavor? So, What's it called? It's this mystery flavor that I cannot figure out. I like that now they don't even want to name them. They're like, it's just mystery. The other thing, too, is it (laughs) says contains 0% juice. So I couldn't even guess off of the juice label. (laughs) I'm going to say boysenberry in uh, honor of Knott's. Oh, in honor of Knott's boysenberry. In honor of Knott's 50th. Boysenberry. Is it good? Does it taste good? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Tommy, you would love the. I don't know if you're a sweet tooth guy, but we went to Knott's scary farm and they had like this boysenberry freeze and it was delicious oh yeah no i love sweets i'm a big ice cream and sweet fan so Mm, um (laughs) and i've always wanted to do that knott's berry i was actually out in palm springs where you are mark uh, a few years ago oh but i was i was pretty broke at the time uh so we couldn't we couldn't swing it but uh yeah it it looked and sounds like a lot of fun it's worth a visit for sure come down and visit yeah, man. One of the I things so. that they're known for is they're they have boysenberry everything. Like boysenberry, <laughs> they even have ale, boysenberry ale, boysenberry nice. ice, boysenberry pie. They even have a fucking pizza that has like boysenberry in the crust. They're that obsessed with the boysenberry gross. there. They're um, like uh, every grocery store ever when September hits with pumpkin shit. They're just yeah, like, oh yeah, dude. you can't get away from it. Although you know what I'm appreciating this year is that now. Um, stores are coming in with caramel apple or like apple cider they're like that's becoming more of a presence because i love that flavor like i love yeah. apple cider donuts oh so my i always God, love yes. to see that shit like yeah. represented yeah i feel like they're they're like okay pumpkin is so you know five years ago so they're trying to usher in <laughs> the new thing soon it'll be apple. like mountain dew it'll be like mystery we don't know what it is <laughs> we don't care anymore yeah. just try just this salad it. dressing just drink it <laughs> Fuck you for that would be disgusting. <laughs> That's Ranch gross. When you go to a fucking like a Trader Joe's or something, it's like one of the samples is like salad dressing. I'm like, who the fuck's drinking that <laughs> out of a? You know what I mean? Get out of here. And then you gotta that. wander around the store with like yeah, with salad your, like, dressing fucking mouth. Dixie cup. <laughs> yeah. You gotta spew, spew into this. <laughs> That's what it you're feels just looking. Like. You're looking for a salad sample to dump it on anywhere <laughs> yeah. in the store. Yeah, like, who's exactly. Got, who's got some lettuce for me here? Just dump it in the produce, just on the naked <laughs> produce. Uh, so here we are. Get wrecked we've got some more spoopy wrecks for you this week uh and i guess similar to how we did it last time we'll go round robin maybe um maybe we'll we'll go reverse maybe we'll kick it off with mark and then go to tommy and then uh and then we'll finish off with me uh but we'll okay. go round robin to call him out guy Ma- mark what do you got first on All right. the wrecks and i'm gonna uh you know get what? the share screen going too i'm just gonna go out with like um 
I went, I watched a uh, an old horror film that I had never heard of. It was from the seventies. It's called The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Have you guys? Oh heard shit! Of that? Yeah. I love that movie. I've it's never awesome. seen. I it. have never seen it, and I, and it was. And if I thought, if I thought like you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was ahead of its time. This one was too. And I think there's a lot of horror stuff that you get in those like newer franchises that based a lot of stuff off of this movie. Well, it's a what's cool movie too. Th- there are things that literally steal from this movie. And my favorite Friday the Thirteenth is Part Two, but the whole Jason wearing the bag yeah, on his yeah. head with the, with the eye hole that is taken directly from Town the Dreaded Sundown. So uh, this movie was was definitely pretty seminal, I think, for slashers. I mean, it it predated Halloween, um, and it's. I actually just ordered this, Matt. You'll appreciate this oh, really? during the Shocktober uh, sale. Yes, oh, uh, good for you. Factory. Uh, it was like ten bucks oh, for the cool. Blu-ray. So, oh, nice! That's a good yeah. pickup for ten bucks. Yeah, that, I, I bet the transfer is amazing because I think I watched it in like Freebie, and that transfer looks fantastic. Yeah, and so I, I'm guessing that Shout Factory disc is going to look awesome. I would imagine it's it's not 4K, so it's you know it's not like some of these beefier ones they've been putting out lately. But uh, they do good transfers even on on Blu-ray. And... Some, well, some 1080 stuff looks just as good as 4K. Oh, yeah. so. absolutely. Thank God. And yeah, I mean, I was streaming this for years, and I think I just when I saw the price on it, um, I was like, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna pull the trigger. Um, Dewey references this in the first scream, and as a kid, that's what got me oh, intrigued oh, in this shit. movie. Wow um when everybody's boarding up their businesses and shutting all their homes down and scream when there's a curfew dewey says you know it's like the town that dreaded sundown and uh oh, wow. <laughs> to- totally referencing this so good that's choice. awesome what did tommy what did you think of it when you first saw it so as a kid honestly i thought it was was slow and it's kind of silly uh at times too it almost feels like you're watching like uh an office version like the office but with a slash <laughs> You know, because it's a little bit um, it's not found footage, but it feels like you're almost watching like a a documentary about what happened in this town. And uh, but it's just grown on me a lot over the years. And I really appreciate how much it's affected other future slashers. And uh, I I dig it. They they actually did a I don't know if it was a remake. It was more of like a sequel to this just a few years ago. Oh, really? Um, It's not great, but it's it's possible. It's okay. If I think love... that this one even had like a, a voiceover kind of like very similar to films from the era it's based in, which I yeah. thought was pretty cool. Yeah, it does have I, it does feel like it should it would have been in black and white. I don't know. It, it has that very 1940s, 50s feel to it, which is really neat. But yeah, they did a good job with the post World War Two era stuff, um, you know, especially considering it came out. What's it? 76 yeah um, they did a pretty good job of hearkening to that era it's and crazy that this was made I, in 76 like because it rusty. looks so much older <laughs> yeah yeah like they and, really and, did a good job at at making it look really old yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that was the budget but even like if you look at the police cars like you can see like rust and they they kind of look like they brushed off like some really shitty cars and we're like oh, okay we'll just use these i guess <laughs> right right these we got all these extra the cars we could use yeah. they got no engines in them we could do whatever we want to them <laughs> it's the actors and their feet are through yeah. the floor <laughs> it's like flintstones <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's this guy's junkyard andrew prine he's like we'll give you a part in the movie if we can use five cars from your junkyard and he's by like, the way this yeah. movie Lots of ladies screaming. So if you don't want to sound like you're a murderer, turn the volume down. If you're in the apartment <laughs> complex, just, just yeah. Morning. Get the get the HOA called on your ass. Yeah. Whoa, your boy's got a silencer. Is that what I just saw in Dude, that this scene? This movie is actually pretty nuts. Some of the kills are like you wouldn't expect from that time period. No, wow. you've not seen it. this, Matt. No, I've never seen it. I, think I know, like, I know like it by reputation. Super... I know it by reputation. I think it's like Tommy. If I'm recalling correctly, it's like pretty short it's like 90 under 90 minutes so it's like yeah. a, it's a pretty quick watch i think and so I think... too and, it, and it's kind of like uh obviously this movie came later but i mean the way he he approaches these like lovers in their car and kills them it's like some son of sam or some zodiac oh yeah it does it does oh, remind awesome. me a lot of zodiac because they're all in like lovers lane part yeah. well yeah. even when he even that shot where the guy comes out with the bag head like it i always think of the, the part at like berryessa where like zodiac comes out in his like full suit yeah. in the daylight um, yeah 
which freaks me out. Like, by the way, this movie very close by me. By the way, <laughs> by the way, this FYI. movie is like you better stay home and make as, out. Yeah, then. dude, I'm not fucking going out. <laughs> Fuck that shit. As goofy as it sounds, it does get pretty disturbing, and that guy with the bag on his head it lives up to that poster because he is pretty creepy it's awesome. especially yeah, those night scenes when he's like terrorizing those people it is very disturbing actually the more i think about it i think i was quite disturbed because you and know just, it's based on something true too even though it's yeah a bit exaggerated but sure, apparently right. they never found this fucking guy oh my god creepy part what is it with these baghead killers they never find them this guy <laughs> and zodiac they're both at large yeah. like <laughs> How do you how do you trace the bag? You know, if it's yeah, Ghostface, right. you're like he bought it at the Halloween, the Spirit Halloween, right? Exactly on Main Street. But how do you trace this fucking burlap sack? Yeah, probably this guy the used a pillowcase. <laughs> They're sold everywhere. Uh, this uh, this seems really cool. Well, it's it's from definitely my on pillow. my list now for sure because it looks good and spooky. I think for, to... as far as film history is concerned, it's worth a watch, especially for you, Matt, since you have that encyclopedic knowledge of all these horror films so i think you'd appreciate it actually uh, it's definitely going on my list for sure now um That's a tommy good what's uh what's up for you buddy on on rex uh so my next one is is one from our era i'm sure you guys are probably pretty familiar with this but uh 1999's idle hands is oh super yes shit. i just I watched this. Watch this so bad. i just watched this recently <laughs> I think I watched it like two weeks ago, but I've been looking through my recently watched and, you know, there's, there's plenty of great stuff, but I wanted to maybe wander off the beaten path a little bit and not just mention, you know, Friday the 13th part three or whatever. So, <laughs> sure. um, yeah, idle hands. I love it. I mean, it came out, uh, 99. So I was 16. So it was like perfect for my age. I was a 16 year old stoner horror kid uh you know pretty fucking lazy i could relate to the perfect to movie <laughs> yeah to devin sawa's character i wasn't as bad as him uh my hair my hair wasn't as greasy but uh <laughs> <laughs> i just i love idle hands um it's it's a it's a fun story as far as, as like the whole possessed hand thing and you know taking over the laziest kid in town with nothing better to do uh but i also just like that it's it's pretty it's comedic i'm not a huge um what's his name fucking seth seth green, green. Seth i don't green, love yeah. seth green but he's he's good in this um jessica alba it's like one of her first roles super super early role for her and uh it's just a fun ass movie like the offspring is in it at like the height of their popularity <laughs> yeah. the band dexter gets his, very gets his head pulled he's, off right he gets, he gets his, like he gets, gets scalped. scalped yeah yeah um and and i just love <laughs> it's it's like at the time you know, obviously Scream had just blown up a few years before this came out. And so we had Scream. I know you did last summer. And we had a, a lot of like sexy teen slashers. And this movie's not really sexy. It's grimy and it's it's kind of gross. I mean, the main hero in it is this fucking kid who chops off his own hand. He's got greasy ass hair. He's wearing like someone else's dirty, bloody clothes the whole movie. <laughs> but it works. It's fun um i love the scene when the principal's like sh uh you know what he's chaperoning the dance and he's calling a fucking phone sex line in his principal office like oh yeah and then <laughs> the hand crawls up his leg and he, at first he's like oh that's nice and then obviously <laughs> it, it turns south for him uh but yeah it's just a fun ass movie and i love uh i love how they use sublime santeria at the end of it i'm a big music guy especially with movies from when we were in high school because the music was great at the time and uh idle hands is a fun one if you're in like a a horror mood that's a, that's a little bit silly or comedic and you don't need some straight scares because it's not that scary but, but it's, it's got fun. some great but it's got it's like a it's like a love letter to those horror movies though because there's a lot of like yeah. romero love and evil dead 2 love and it definitely feels like it's made by people who love and revere the genre and you yeah. have so many good effects in it, man, especially once the two, once the two dickhead friends, yeah. like I also love that the movie doubles down. And it's like, it never, it wisely never explains what's going on. It's just like, no. yep, it's an evil hand and that's it. And these two guys are now this kid's a zombie and this kid has to reattach his detachable head. Like, it never has to explain it, and it kind of just makes sense in the scene. And if you go with it, it's fucking awesome. And the yeah, effects like, are really good in it. 
I was just going to say the you know, there's a few digital effects, I think, where if you see the hand moving or jumping, you know, the, it was some early digital age shit. But all this stuff with the two friends coming back as as corpses and all grotesque, that's all practical effects. And yeah, they're great. They yeah, look it looks awesome. Really good. S Seth Green's got that like quarter full beer bottle sticking out of his head. <laughs> yeah, you, can, yeah. <laughs> you can see the liquid <laughs> swishing around against his forehead. Let's see if there's a good shot of him. Uh, yeah, he's particularly great. All the handwork too, like I know it's like obviously like Evil Dead inspired. There he is. Yeah. Um, it's so fucking well done. It's all just a really fun movie, and another merciful like short one. Like if you want to just pop it in and have fun for eighty minutes. Yeah, it's quick. There's not a lot of character development. There's not a lot of like you said. <laughs> they they really don't explain the hand. I mean, Vivica does uh a three minute explanation of i'm a druid priestess and this hand takes over lazy people and <laughs> right <laughs> about it but I they kind of you... wisely like avoid it like i i think yeah. like it's kind of better the less you know about it yeah i love like, when that, he smokes look how good that looks he smokes weed out of his inhaler which like <laughs> My wife has asthma, and if you if you have asthma, you can't turn your inhaler into a bowl. <laughs> it's just not gonna it's not gonna work later when when you need some oxygen. Not uh, advisable for this <laughs> for this tool. The more but you I, know with Tommy Nuggets. That's yeah. right. <laughs> oh wait, who is the guy when bowl. he's at this like safari burger? Oh, it's Tom DeLong from Blink One Eighty Two. Tom DeLong is working at the Safari Burger. He's the guy oh. who he's like he's like the manager guy that turns around. <laughs> There's a bunch of yeah. punkers, like popular, like that. pop punk. Yeah, it's Tom DeLonge in this. Day. I remember I, it's the first time I ever noticed it because I just watched this like a month ago. I think it came out on Tubi. And I was like, oh, oh my God. God. I even texted Mark. I was like, fucking Tubi is showing idle hands. <laughs> and I, I think fucking you, you watched even it. wrecked it too. I right? think I did. Yeah. I, I, I think this movie's great. I By just the way, love this movie. I forgot to, if, if, had you seen, actually, question for both of you, have you guys seen this in the theater? Yeah, well, I, I saw it actually. In, I oh, believe I saw it in the theater when it originally came out. So I, I saw it in the theater. And what's funny is because uh, it is rated R. And when I was like from 12 to 15, we could sneak into R movies so easily. <laughs> from when I turned 16, though, I don't know. There must have been some complaints or whatever. They started really cracking down on R movies. So I remember it was hard to sneak into this uh, end of days and the <laughs> South Park movie were like the hardest movies to get in where you bought tickets for like wild wild west and then you went to you know yeah uh, uh, idle hands and yes. uh so i remember we snuck in me and two buddies and one of my friends i don't know at the time maybe he likes this movie now but he was so not into it that he fell asleep so we left him in the theater like we didn't go far you know we were outside but we left him in the theater and, and he was woken up by like the uh custodian cleaning it out and uh <laughs> He was pretty fucking pissed. So I will always remember <laughs> that happened right after Idle Hands. And I liked the movie first first watch. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, it's a fun, it's a really fun one. Mark, have you ever seen it? I've only seen it on VHS. Yeah, you should watch like, you should rewatch it. It's it's worth a it's worth a revisit. It's a, it's a it's a fun little movie. I'd actually like to see like a nice good copy of it. Actually. Tubi the version on Tubi looks pretty good. Oh, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how nice of a transfer exists for Idle Hands. Like, I'm sure all the, as I'm sure all the source materials like are gone. <laughs> Nobody's keeping these on I mean, hand. Probably what's ever on uh, Tubi is going to be at least 720 or 1080 because I have the Blu-ray of it, and it's been out for a few years, and it's not like a boutique label or anything. It's not an Arrow or Shout Factory. It's just a studio Blu-ray. But that's usually what they'll show on the streamers. Does it look good, if, by the way, Tommy? That. It, yeah, it does. I mean, it's it's you know, it's not like watching a Dunkirk on 4K or anything like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it it does look good. And I, I would wager to say this is better than Dunkirk. I can safely say that. As, yes, as a I movie, agree. yes. Aesthetically, maybe not so much, but yeah, as, <laughs> as a film. Uh, but no, yeah, like I think this is one of those ones when it came out you know 16 or back in vhs days when you watched, watched it mark it was like yeah that was fun but i think now when you watch it it's like wow this aged really well like in 2023 idle hands still holds up for sure and i mean oh cool 24 that's years old that's that's pretty good it's impressive yeah it's a good track record all right man idle hands all right so uh i'm up and i will tell you guys so i will stick with this so we're all watching these kind of older stranger movies bit of a blind spot for me i finally watched oh, interesting gargoyles from 1972 it's so old that imdb does not even have a, a autoplay trailer for it 
Um, <laughs> so what this movie is known for, Whoa. it was a made for TV movie made in 1972. And I only know it by reputation. Gargoyle? I know these, how these gargoyles look. And the reason I do is because it was actually one of Stan Winston's first ever gigs was making oh, wow. the gargoyle suits for this movie. The movie's very simple. I thought it was going to be, I had heard over the years, I was like, oh, people said this movie's really slow. It's a made-for-TV movie in the 70s. Like, how good's it going to be? And I actually found right. it to be pretty fast-paced, a lot more fast-paced than I was expecting. It's a very simple story. It's like a father and daughter sort of on a road trip who come across these living gargoyles. And they explain to you that, like, gargoyles have been on Earth for X amount of hundreds of years, and they are looking to repopulate sometimes with human women um and that sounds like a skinamax plot but it's actually yeah. like <laughs> it's done it's done in almost a clive barkery kind of night breed kind of way um and the suits look fucking awesome um this is you can see there are different types of gargoyles but like i want to show you guys like this is the main gargoyle and he's played by bernie casey all people who you know um Who's that? bernie casey was in do you remember revenge of the nerds he was yeah. the head of the black frat <laughs> Okay. Bernie Casey. Oh, yeah. He's a, a famous oh, okay. football player. Oh, yeah. He's also in I'm Going to Get You, Sucka, Cleopatra Jones. He's the main gargoyle. Um, He doesn't even have a name. That guy is under all this makeup. And Damn. it's really cool. Like, it's just one of those things. Like, I love kitschy 70s that rubber looks amazing, suits. Though. Like, uh, like Land of the Lost. It like does the look cool. Stacks. They that look fucking like awesome. Legend quality. No. And look, yeah, dude, Scott young, Glenn. young Scott Glenn I, I is I in it. I thought I saw that wow. name. That's awesome. Yeah, he plays a, a he's like a biker and uh, he's like a, a biker in town. And he's one of the first humans to believe that um, to believe the girl's story. She's like, Gargoyles took my dad. And of course, the cops are like, shut up, stupid. <laughs> right. And Scott Glenn's like, the fuck you talking about fucking gargoyles and fucking too. <laughs> and he goes out there with his dirt bike gang to try <laughs> to help. And he becomes one of the final fighters against the gargoyles at the end. When they go to the caves to try to get rid of them. Hey, wow, I know this actually guys... sounds like a cool movie. This does. It's fucking not... cool. It's really cool. It's like the I've hills have them. eyes, but with gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Like they go. It's it's kind of like oh, Mark. Looks crazy. Funny enough, because we just went to the Evil Dead exhibit. It's kind of the same story as Evil Dead. It's like you know how in the tape recorder, that's like the guy talking to his daughter and being like, I discovered the, the Necronomicon and this. So this guy is basically that. He hunts for weird artifacts. And one of the things they come across in the town is that someone shows them what is basically like a gargoyle skull. And at first they're like, like we don't believe season. you. And then <laughs> the gargoyles show up and they start to fuck with them. Uh, it's it's awesome. Yeah, it actually looks really damn good though. Yeah, I want to watch it. It doesn't look like Yeah, it's really shitty. cool. It is on, um, it's on Tubi. Shout out to Tubi uh, again. Tubi coming through in the clutch. So if you want to watch it, so again, it, it was made for TV, so you're you're going to have the black boxes on the sides, but the good news is it was shot on film, so it looks fucking good. <laughs> so yeah. you, you will forsake something, Actually, but it does something look good. There's something nice about seeing something shot on film in 4x3. I don't know. It's just like very nostalgic, but it also is like, so it's too. nice for compositions too. Well, and I also think, so it's funny when, when HD TVs first started coming out and like my first TV was a plasma, I didn't like anything being four by three because you'd get burn in on the sides from that <laughs> image oh, yeah. displayed for 90 minutes. But now with like OLEDs and I think QLED TVs, uh, it, it doesn't work that way. And because they do such rich, deep blacks, instead of them, I'm not going to get all technical because I, I would sound like an ass, but instead of the diode. <laughs> showing black it's like the absence of light so it doesn't it just turns them off image retention yeah 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 uh so four by three is fun when you're watching it on a 65 inch but fucking, have you oh, oh, screen yeah. tommy have you noticed because do you have an oled i do i have a sony okay. oled so i have an oled too and i noticed there are some places like tubi i don't know if you encounter this too matt where they actually they keep it 16 by 9 so like the edges are instead of being black and those like pixels turning off they're like slightly gray and you're like ah god damn it i bought this all in for nothing yes (laughs) it's it's almost like it's almost like the pan and scan that they used to you know when they would sell the full screen dvds of the widescreen movies it's a little bit like that where you lose you lose some image you know up at the top and at the bottom but it fills your screen more which is obviously good for people that that get mad about that but i'm down (laughs) with some four by three shit man some old stuff 
And the uh, the gray bars are really just for old TV shows. Like if you wanted to watch fucking, I'll make it up, Mash or Taxi or oh, okay. Chips or something, it's yeah. probably <laughs> gonna have the gray shit. Uh, you know, you're gonna watch Chips later, man. If you watch some Chips. We just you know, found out Matt's recent <laughs> TV yeah. watch is guilty watch pleasureless. <laughs> yeah, WKRP in Cincinnati, <laughs> Mr. Ed. <laughs> Remember all the shit at, on Nick at Night? You'd be like, Oh yeah, <laughs> F true. As a kid. As a kid, Green weren't you acres? like, ah, God damn it, and you just turn that shit off? Oh, yeah. Fuck no, I dude. It. I used to love, I would at least watch Green Acres and Mr. Ed, <laughs> but then when it started getting into, like, Civil War, like, I did not like F Troop, and when F Troop would come on, I'd be like, fuck this. I'd turn F this, and I'd turn it off. <laughs> my mom my mom would always want to watch Petticoat Junction and Green Acres, and I was like, nah, I I'm not yeah, down I'm with good. this, mom. <laughs> <Petticoat> <laughs> this Junction, off. what is that? Uh, it's, I, I, it's, it might even be older than all Is it on, like, a variety movies. show? Uh, you know, honestly, I don't remember much about yeah. it because I, I didn't like it, but uh, <laughs> this it this week's be. episode is all for the boomers. People, these <laughs> yeah. we're talking directly to your childhoods. <laughs> yeah. If you're a product of post-World War II lovemaking, then you're yeah. gonna like <laughs> you're gonna love this get wreck. Wait, episode. by the way, this character actor, this lady's hilarious. She's the intaker at the um she's the innkeeper rather at the motel where the dad and the daughter are staying and she's like a drunk and, and a lush and she tries to back it to the dad and the dad's not having it. And then when the gargoyles attack, she gets pissed because she thinks they wrecked her motel. And she's like, gotta get out of here. <laughs> it's gargoyles. really fun. I you gotta be in the mood for situation. this kind of thing. But I think if you're on its wavelength and listen, they don't fuck around. It's not like they make you wait 40 minutes to see the gargoyles. Those fucking gargoyles are in the first five minutes of the movie. They're, Nice. They are coming in hot. Oh, that is very night breed of them. Then yes, they don't it's waste like, any time. Gargoyles. They're like the yeah. gargoyles have equal screen time with the humans. Is what I think is kind of what they were trying to go for. That's kind of how it should be when the movie is simply titled go. Gargoyles. So Dude, that's that looks good. Yeah. awesome. And that it's really fun. Great. It just looks so cool. Once again, it's like you know we're big uh, proponents of physical effects on this show, and just to watch a movie like this, it was just so cool. To watch like real tactile gargoyles like walking around, I was like, "This is awesome." By the way, quick question: I know that's probably a lame question, but when they did the interiors of that cave, did they use an actual cave, or did it look like some shitty foam cave? Double. So there, there are some like when Scott Glenn goes in and he's got a torch. It's like really dramatic. It's obviously the real cave, but then later there's like some. There's like some discussions between the main gargoyle and the human girl, and those are clearly like on a foam soundstage <laughs> <Nice. laughs> that they lit the same. But it looks awesome, man. They, they Dude, these they, are like these famous. I think these are like the famous Cable Guy Star Trek caves. Like it's these caves it that everybody great. always uses. Yeah, like, I that thought the gargoyle awesome. looked like something straight out of Star Trek for sure. So oh um, yeah, yeah, it's got a real Slee Stack Land of the Lost vibe, which is I love that yeah. look of the Slee Stack. This yeah. is actually a female gargoyle. That's creepy. <laughs> so yeah. when you, when you dude, started... there she is. She's trying to lush it up. She's like, "Come on in. You have, your daughter's tired. The gargoyles aren't here. Just me." <laughs> That's what happening in this scene right in here. In my big night robe, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> drinking you, some sherry. Yeah, you've heard of night breed. Come on in and see night robe. <laughs> <laughs> it has the most fabric. <laughs> that was like their so, Victoria Secret at the time. Yeah, yeah. that was, yeah. That was some this was considered risque. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of my ankle is showing. Oh. <laughs> so that boy, I'll be right in. <laughs> That's my when first you, uh, pick for the week here. <laughs> when you started typing gargoyles, I thought you were gonna uh, go for the like the early '90s TV show for a second. Well, it's oh, funny yeah. because of that. Because of me watching this, I've now wanted to go back because I used to watch the '90s gargoyles as we all did as a kid, and now is I'm it like, based fuck. on the same thing? No, totally different oh. story. Because uh, I remember those gargoyles firmly start like in the eight, like almost like Highlander, like in this in the 1600s with Scottish clans and yeah. like. The gargoyles are friends to the barbarians. Like, I remember there being a very clear, like, lineage, um, but it's different. But now I do want to rewatch those gargoyle cartoons, um, especially they too, because cool. if you're a Nintendo Switch guy, that gargoyles video game that none of us could beat is being reissued, uh, remastered, rather. Ooh, so nice. you're going to have a nice new copy for retro gamers who want to play like me, the old gargoyles <laughs> game. So I might actually now jump in whole hog to the gargoyles series. Well, and I think wasn't that Todd McFarland that did that series? Um, uh, 
I don't and, know. Oh, really? Wait a minute. I, I feel like true? some some inspiration would have had to be pulled from this movie as well. Uh, I'm, if sh- it was I'm sure. Yeah. Gargoyles. Gargoyles. Wait, let's see. Is there any Todd? I Todd. guess there are not much no. interest in gargoyles nah. nowadays. <laughs> Gargoyles, just not as hot as they used to be. <laughs> That's what it says on the everywhere. National Enquirer and yeah. ashamed gargoyles leaving. Gargoyles, fun, not as hot as in they the used 70s. to be. Yeah. Today it's all Taylor Swift. It's not gargoyles. <laughs> the kids want Taylor Swift. Uh, anyway, Mark, what's next for you on the Rex? Oh, okay. I'll. You know what? I'm gonna do. I'll do more contemporary. Uh, also a horror. My cousin, Mister Suspicious, recommended. Uh, totally killer which is on prime oh nice so if you have prime go watch that shit it's actually it starts it's weird it starts off feeling serious and then it gets really fun and more like comedic it's fantastic i had a blast all the way to through it's super fun the killer's mask looks cool i feel as though it'll be iconic eventually it'll probably wow. if it doesn't get picked up i have a feeling that it'll become a have a cult following it's, i heard yeah. that this is Very like old this is too. like a back to the future take on the slasher right? yeah i That's didn't want to say is. anything actually but uh, yeah, yeah there yeah. is a but it's not done in like this overused annoying marvel way it's just kind of fun it pokes fun of itself it's it's super entertaining and it's not like ridiculously if i recall correctly it wasn't ridiculously gory it's just like really fun i, don't know, I would just say it's fun if you like fun horror films I do. Go watch this one. I won't say too much about it because I don't want to give anything away. It's but... a newbie. Is this Blumhouse yeah. too? It looked like I, I think saw? so. Yeah. Yeah. Blumhouse. Yeah. Um, and the girl in this, the main actress, I, I can't remember her name right now, but she's great. She's in a lot of things. Um, she's in the Black Coat's Daughter, which is super underrated. I think and she's What's Sabrina that? the Teenage Witch. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, um i'm in i had no idea this was out already so i didn't I know anything about it either until my cousin told me about it and then i was just like okay he's got good Rex. i'll check it out like i said it's super fun if you want to just have fun and you know it's nighttime and you want to watch something that's i guess in the horror genre check this movie out all right shit man totally look at that tagline murder that. is so 1987 yeah <laughs> that's good that's good i like that I love this. The killer mask. looks cool though, and that yeah, mask I love the way is this awesome. Looks. Yeah, yeah. It's and that's really something that healer. Yeah, there's so, that. That seems pretty dope. Oh, vanilla ice mask. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like Max Hedrum and a vanilla ice baby. Yeah. It's like the two <laughs> combined. <laughs> um, no, this is cool. Sometimes it is also a fun throwback film too. I should say. And do they do a good job with the 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 eighties representation? Because I thought I think so. They yeah, don't. it it okay. felt more like you know. Those kind of Spielbergy suburbs, right. oh, like so, the Amblin towns. Yeah. Oh, so you that, know it, I love. Man, you got me. You know I love an Amblin town. You fucking know I love that shit. <laughs> you said Amblin town. I was like, God damn it! Now I gotta watch this shit. <laughs> I think you'd have Isn't... a lot of fun with it, actually, Matt. This if, looks like it's right up like my a alley. Like horror comedy. I, fan. I love horror comedy, oh, and yeah, I love high dude. concept horror. Um. So that's the I'm, guy from. I'm uh, in. Uh, Oh, that's the guy from uh, what's it called? Dead Man on Campus. Um, ah. The frat guy that's like, kick me in the balls. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. He's also By in Freddy vs. Jason. He's they that's do, it. They that's do, where I know him. They yeah. do reference Back to the Future, so it does poke fun of itself. And Good. it is kind of like very similar in story. It's like you're going back to the old high school. I don't know. It's very fun. She's in Scream 5. This is Scream 6. six. Yeah, six. this is Scream yeah. 6 right here. This is your killer. Spoiler. Yeah, she's the killer that I called in the first 10 minutes of the fucking <laughs> movie. Jeez. That's all right. I do like that. I got to tell you, like, this looks this looks very cool. Um, I'm going to check I'm this gonna... out, Mark. Yeah, please uh, do. I'm going to write this shit I down bet you guys a goddamn will be marker. next week. Oh, yeah. Next week, you're going to be <laughs> that, like... That shit always works, Matt. I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna break this down. Put in shredder. <laughs> you just hear the background. <laughs> I, I secretly write like buy cat food. It's just an excuse for me to like continue in my Bell. real life. Like, yes, <laughs> go on, Mark. Uh, and you're like kibbles and kitty. I'm bits, writing so. it right down. <laughs> Watch That's new awesome. Taylor Swift movie in theaters. Well, <laughs> I, I can prove I've I've written 
I've written down gargoyles, uh, bad camera work, but <laughs> I've written down How gargoyles. How convenient, Tommy totally Nuggets. Killed. I know. It says two Taco Bells. <laughs> Don't forget to get the extra hot sauce. <laughs> New pumpkin spice frosty at Wendy's. <laughs> Has anyone tried that, by the way? No, uh, but it looks no. delicious. I have no Wendy's near me, so... Please, somebody get it. Okay, so how about this? I, I have one right by my house. I will get it. Oh, you do? And I will ship one to you on dry ice. <laughs> <laughs> Cinema small. Like, it hey, Matt, up. I got like a really wet package. <laughs> <laughs> it's surrounded by, by bees yeah. and ants. You're like, like, I cannot accept this package. <laughs> Yes. I open it up and it's like some John Carpenter horror film. It's just those like really gross <laughs> mm-hmm. bugs that are all going. It's gained yeah. sentience now, like the stuff. It can move in the box and do things. <laughs> but as like this congealed bug person. Do not ship Frosty's people. It doesn't work. <laughs> no. It's just going to be a soggy mold ridden cup by the time it arrives. That's right. We need Eat to save ass. humanity, not kill it. <laughs> uh, Tommy, what's up for you next on the Rex? <laughs> Oh boy, uh, next one, I debated throwing this one out today, but we just watched it a couple nights ago and it's actually, it's super fun. Uh, I am going to go with Train to Busan. Uh, oh, shit. 2016. And Ooh. part of the reason I debated it is um, I know some people, you know, just don't necessarily like to fuck with subtitles, especially in the day and age of people like bored scrolling. But honestly, during horror season, you shouldn't be doing too much of that you really should give the screen uh your undivided attention sometimes and train to busan is a really fun one it's super intense and you know obviously we all got too many zombie movies in too short of a period of time uh from like the early aughts you know 2004 around the time of the Zack snyder dawn of the dead remake which was great up until the early 2010s there was just so many shit zombie movies and uh train to busan is like an awesome refreshing take there's nothing that groundbreaking about it at, at its surface but i just feel like it's a it's a good emotional story you really get connected with the the main characters in this um you guys have both seen it right oh yeah yeah, yeah. i, I love being the, like uh... very over dramatic and lots of crying and that's like yeah, yeah. please eat these people quickly <laughs> i it love the a... uh i love the character work though like the big bartender the beefy teddy bear guy he's, that guy's he's great. awesome he's the best dude in it for sure uh um, yeah there's some fun set pieces in it i remember there being melodrama but i'm like that comes that comes with korean movies they always have say... to have a little healthy amount of melodrama in them <laughs> and and i think that that is uh how how i can kind of easily just like pay that less mind because it does feel very much and it's emotional core it's a korean movie and and it does feel like korean culture definitely dictates the emotions of the movie it's not made for uh american audiences to you know perceive the same emotionally but uh the intensity and the the zombie work and how gruesome and fast these zombies are it, it holds up with anything the else that we've received you know i know snyder's dawn of the dead was the first time we saw sprinting zombies and uh this movie does a great job of that as well i mean when there's a zombie chasing you from train car to fucking train car and just total like disregard for what doors are in their way and they're just smashing through shit and climbing over each other i love there's a shot at the end of the movie where the main uh, protagonist get on a train and they're pulling away and there's all these zombies coming after them. And one zombie runs and like catches the back of the train car they're on. And then all the other zombies almost connect to form a chain that's like moving to get oh, to the shit, back of this right. train car. And yeah. it's, it's so cool because it, it, it turns the zombies into these inanimate uh, objects and structures and they're not living beasts anymore. They're just like these like a hive mind almost yeah it's it's like yeah. it's like when ants all got together and build a bridge or something or it's like you know barrel of monkeys all connected uh it's <laughs> it's just on its own. yeah that shot right there, there it's go. a fun fun intense zombie movie i do believe this is about two hours and it it if runs it's korean it's probably like two and a half hours <laughs> yeah and it's <laughs> you know what it's it does remind me of it reminds me of like it felt like they took that plane sequence for from world war z and just extended it inside this train it is like yeah the oh, action i do i do like awesome. me some world war z man god world war yeah z world war z is, z is awesome it's a good one 
And I think that's a good uh, a good comparison. The the train sequence, or excuse me, the plane sequence in World War Z is like the whole movie of Train to Busan. Like, yeah. <laughs> just instead of obviously the airplane, it's train cars. But um, and then I, I like the human stuff too. How like you know the worst villain in this whole movie is actually a, a living human guy and not the zombies. You know, there's one guy that's like we got to get on the next train. We got to get it going. He's always closing the doors on some survivors or he's not wanting to let people in. And he used to work villain. for the MTA, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I was working in New York city. I know. How it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's funny. You say that. Cause I, I think he does do something with a train line in the movie. He says what company he works for. And I think it is like New York, tra- <laughs> train yeah. Yeah. New yeah. York transit authority. <laughs> Uh, but disrespecting yeah. people and treating them like cattle since the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> like, how else are you going to get there? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Train to Busan. I've never seen the sequel. Uh, I guess oh, Peninsula. A sequel Peninsula. And I've what, heard have you heard anything things. about it, though? Is it supposed to be just as good or is it kind of like they? I have heard kind of all negative it. things Ooh, from people me, who have seen it. Me as well. And honestly, I'm not going to, you know, make myself look like a total meathead here, but I don't always enjoy watching subtitled horror. I like with horror to watch the screen, right? And look at the corners and see where shit's yeah. going to pop off. And sometimes with subtitles, you know, you can't do that as much. You got to pay attention. You got to watch it like twice because you miss so much stuff. Yeah. Just going. <laughs> yeah, you really do. It's true. But I, I definitely can make an exception for Train to Busan, and it's something I won't watch late because if you're tired, you know, and you're reading, you might fall asleep. But would you uh, ever watch it dubbed? By the way, probably not because I've seen it now four or five times with the subtitles, so I don't feel like I need the dubbing. But dude, eventually could... Tommy just learns Korean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just watch it with no <laughs> subtitles, Korean track. <laughs> that'd be cool I, if, if i did that i'd probably go visit korea because they got some awesome looking street food there that i wanted oh shit. koreans yeah. make the best fried chicken on planet earth i maintain this <laughs> i'm from yeah. the south and i'm here to tell you our fried chicken is fine compared to the koreans they kick our asses with the fried chicken <laughs> all day and all night that it's korean true. fried chicken is the best goddamn fried chicken i ever had they have it perfected with the paper thin crispy exterior and like <laughs> crunch in every bite it's not too overwhelming yeah, like no, I'm, I'm, I'm in north carolina so of course you know technically the south and they would probably say we make best fried chicken here in north carolina but <laughs> no like korean yeah, fried chicken is much lighter you don't feel like you're going to keel over after yeah. you eat it and you can have more of it which is even better i love that <laughs> yeah. I like to gorge. So like, you, you know, I can have maybe three, four pieces regular Southern fried chicken. Korean fried chicken, I can have eight, nine pieces and yeah. still go on with my life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Plus some sides. I like to have a little rice, a little fries. Dude, you got to take care of yourself. We got to go to HHF again. What's wrong? <laughs> okay, no more Korean fried chicken. No more Korean fried chicken. Uh, next up for me. So... I won't, fried chicken. Oh, it was a Korean fried chicken movie that I watched. Uh, no, I won't belabor <laughs> this too much because I'm actually on another podcast discussing this movie, but I watched Burnt Offerings, oh. uh, which is a movie from the 70s. I had a real 70s kick like these past couple of weeks. I don't know what my goddamn problem has been. I'm like, hey, you know, I've just been a real 70s. You ever get like that? Get like a decade in your mind and you're like, I want to watch TV and movies from this decade. Uh, and the 70s yes. just happened to be my decade. I don't know why. Um I watched Burnt Offerings. Have you guys seen Burnt Offerings? I saw it at Metrograph. It was like part of their like R-rated series. Because it's P- it's known for being it's PG. PG, but extremely violent. And yes. a, if you haven't seen it, Tommy, the ending is like a bit of a surprise ending. So I have not it's seen awesome. it. I've definitely, I've definitely heard of it. And I'm seeing some names here like Karen Black, Burgess Meredith, Betty Davis. So that's that's pretty awesome, but I've yeah. never seen it myself. Well, Oliver Reed is the name you should really pay attention to because he's fucking awesome in it. He's great in isn't, it. Um, isn't that Proximo from uh Yes from yeah. Gladiator? Shadows and nice. Dust. Shadows yeah, and dust. Shadows and Dust, Max. Shadows and Dust. I'll have to watch um, this. I you so that's why I'm not I'm not letting any video run for this because I don't want to spoil it for you, Tommy, or anybody in our audience who has not seen this, because it's one of those movies that can be spoiled for you very easily. So I'm just gonna let it linger on this very creepy poster and tell you, as Mark said, it's one of the most interesting movies because it's pre-PG 13. So we have an okay. R-rated horror movie that they somehow gave a PG rating to. 
Um, and it Some does get it does it. warrant that rating. Uh, it warrants an R rating for sure. Uh, but you get again heavy hitter murderers row cast. Karen, if you if Karen Black's in your horror movie, you fucking know it's going to be good. Uh, yeah. She always plays somebody eccentric and wild. This is Mama Firefly from the Firefly family movies in the House of a Thousand Corpses and how uh, terror you know trilogy of terror, a bunch of other awesome stuff. Oliver Reed steals the movie. He's got he's so good. I don't even want to say his deal. Burgess Meredith is in like two scenes and is unforgettable in them. Nice. Uh, and Betty Davis, this is her same stretch where four years later she'll show up and watch her in the woods. Another underseen weirdo horror movie that maybe shouldn't be rated PG and is. Mm-hmm. Um, but Burnt Offerings, it's a very creepy movie. It's a haunted house movie. And if you're very well versed in the genre, you see this movie, you might be like, hmm, this is, I've seen this and I've seen this. Well, this is where it originated. Before there was Poltergeist, before there was. Um, all these other, you know, f- famous haunted house tropes, they originated here in this movie. Uh, it's also a very existential horror uh, kind of approach to a movie because it makes you scared of life and sort of it, the movie plays with your perception of reality and time. You also don't understand how uh, the world works once you're in this house uh, and what it starts to do to the family. It starts to break them apart psychologically. It's a real fucking crazy movie. Again, I'm, this is I like the, the Tubi Shining show. borrowed a lot from it too. Yes, four years predates The Shining. Nice. Uh, this is also on Tubi. So if you want, Tubi is going to get a lot of play from us this week. Dude, if Tubi you want, is, I'm telling you. Tubi they've got an shit. amazing collection. And they, especially if you're digging into like a decade of horror, or, you know, if you're like, I want to go all 70s, like Burnt Offerings. They have a, they have a huge selection there. But the, the yeah. transfer they have, I think, is decent. I'm sure I would love like if some boutique label like Arrow or somebody put this out, which I'm sure they have. I haven't I haven't done the research yet, but that was my one thing. I thought the transfer was a little fuzzy, but I wonder if that's how the movie naturally looks. I think um, well, this the, I saw a 35 millimeter copy and it was a bit. It had that like yeah, you don't know talking like, about you know all those like old movies are almost like because the lenses they use they weren't like as precise. They're just always slightly soft. So I think yeah, that's like just fuzzy. the way it looks. But Tubi is kind of like the best place to watch obscure horror movies and like the latest pharmaceutical ads, which I always thought is funny. <laughs> yeah. In case you missed out on uh, finding out about triobola. Cutting edge. <laughs> you shouldn't you take should. if you're allergic to triobola, <laughs> yeah. apparently. Uh, <laughs> it's always people having fun. And then it's like, if your toenails start to bleed. <laughs> yeah. It's like have... a sex scene. <laughs> yeah. Then you're like, look at those boobs. And then it's toe jam. <laughs> like uh, now I'm fun. normal. If you have nautical nightmares, <laughs> dreams of a fireplace. Um, yeah, Burnt Offerings is awesome. And you can hear me. I think I can tease this, but you can hear me reviewing this. This is actually going to be the Halloween special for our friends at the Underrated Movie Podcast. They invited me oh, to nice. review this with them. So uh, I'm. you can hear me talk about this in full at the end of this month over there on Underrated. And Ooh, I had a yeah, great time discussing know. it. It was fucking actually, awesome. That's cool. Really good discussion. Yeah, we really dug into the movie like hard core it was it almost felt like a real like it felt like a real like heady film school discussion where you're fucking picking apart like analyzing quirks and scenes it was really cool to do it by the way had you seen it before that though or yes yes no i had seen it at pratt uh i'd seen it at pratt a couple times so i was in a class that showed us this i don't think you were in that class with me it was was one of the few classes mark wasn't in with me we're like, we're going to watch Pather Panchali. And I'm like, God damn it. Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't in the Pather Panchali class. <laughs> I had to watch that in like the My basement class showed of burnt offerings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did better in that exchange, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I won in that one. So there you go. I won't say too much more about it, but I'll just say if you need any horror enticement, it's a great haunted house movie. And I'll, and I'll leave it with, uh, with that. And I'm going to add a hot take because I'll, I'll probably watch this on Tubi here uh, soon during Horrorthon. But Tubi is a better horror streaming service right now than Shudder is. I'm hundred percent say that. That is um, so true. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Shudder's got a lot of stuff that if it's good, I probably own it, and then the rest of it's dreck mostly. <laughs> Shudder's Shudder's AV also sucks. Like everything yeah. over there is at 720p like get with the times guys fucking really? if tubi can do things in 1080 i don't think tubi goes 4k tubi don't have that but if tubi no. can do 1080 so can you shutter like get get over yourselves you know what i mean right. yeah. they're like we don't have the toe fungus commercials to <laughs> supplement that <laughs> we don't we're have not that getting pharmaceutical ad money yeah <laughs> we don't have that sweet activia money 
<laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis taking the poop yogurt. Uh, Mark, what's next for you, buddy? On the red. I guess shit. Let's see. What should I do? I'm gonna go. You know, I'm gonna stick to old school because we didn't have a get Rex. Uh, you and I can talk about it. Um, Matt got us tickets to see Opera, and that movie was fucking great. I think we both had an amazing time watching it. That was the yes. first time I had seen it on the big screen. It's so weird. I'm not a. I haven't really watched a lot of Dario Argento fa- uh, Ryan. movies. So yeah. I think this is like the first time I actually sat through one, especially in a theater setting. Like, I don't even think I've seen Suspiria. I've only seen the remake. So it was a really cool introduction to his movies because it, it actually felt huge. It's like they put on an actual opera performance that is happening during the, the movie. It's crazy. And then, of course, he has got like bullet time shots in like, when, when was this made? The 80s? 87. 87. <laughs> it's was, actually was got John a lot Wu? of really cool shit in it. Was John Woo helping out on this shit? Or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the time. That's awesome. Oh yeah, look at that shot. That, I remember that shot, but I've oh, never seen this that. Movie. Is so un- you know what? There's rules? a lot of unsettling. You know, you're watching world. Argento when like the music goes like this. La 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 la. <laughs> and then when something bad happens, it goes. No 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 no. It's like a heavy metal band comes on. You're like some shit's about to go down. I was not used to that at all. So like that was like my first time experiencing that. And also, by the way, I guess people can see this. Shut the fuck up, Europeans, about how violent Americans are. This shit was like one of the most disturbing <laughs> fucking things oh, yeah. I've ever seen. Well, in Argento, his all of his movies are are so over the top violent, and I mean, some of this stuff looks like it's straight out of a Saw movie, like with the uh, yeah, exactly. needles 100%. under the eyelids. It's like, so, gee, yeah, I wonder where the Americans got their uh, inspiration from. These fucking Italian yeah, violent bastards. <laughs> I will I will concede to Europeans that maybe we have too many guns and gun worship in our movies. Even yeah, I think we should fun. trade off the guns for boobs, I think. Like, yeah, European. and scissors, boobs and scissors. Oh, it, <laughs> interesting. Style. It's, it's called Terror at the Opera in that version. You saw that? Oh, wow. The, the so title is this, cool Terror at the Opera. Is this a riff off of Phantom of the Opera? Uh, no, no. Uh, oh no! It just oh, no. It just happens different. to take place at at an opera. That's it. It's okay. about it, it's about modern opera culture. So like an opera star, um, opera producers, the sort of opera theater scene o- over there in Italy. But Matt, um, didn't it feel like you were actually behind the scenes with these people? It felt yes. like a an actual production of an opera. It, I think like all of Argento's it, Tommy, movies, cool. it felt like a nightmare I could not wake from. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> yeah. I was like locked in and it was like, you live at this opera now. <laughs> like there's While crazy shit queso. happening. While eating your chips and queso, you fat American. Enjoy this <laughs> showing of Dario Argento. We saw this on Mark. Look like, at all these skinny opera. We people. saw this as part of the, um, there's a lovely, uh, they're touring with it. I think AGFA, the American Genre Film Association. They um they re-release this. Uh, it's going to a bunch of specialty theaters like Alamo Draft House. So Mark and I were able to see this on the big screen. I don't think it was thirty five. I think it was a DCP, but it looked. I mean, who gives a shit? Outstanding. Cool, right? yeah. Sounded so fucking good. Like they put some money behind this release because like they <laughs> I did they definitely cleaned it up, but it looks fucking awesome. Uh, as a movie, it's and great. So, by I, the way, didn't you know if like... you're a fan of Argento or not? You know. Well, and it was feel this... very innovative too? Because like '87, yes. they were doing like some crazy. There were some shots in this movie that I, I, you know, I read the like American Cinematography Magazine and all that shit. So I mean, I feel yeah, as you like were an, very I'm... impressed. Even there Mark was like, "How the fuck did they like, do that?" Yeah, it's <laughs> at that time you're like, "That is a crazy <laughs> camera move." Because they had like huge film cameras, and they're just doing like it's yeah. almost yeah, like, like you don't around you don't think and... of Argento as like a visual stylist who's ahead of his time, but he really is. Yeah, I know. Matt, Matt, Matt said something really cool. He's like, because after we had seen it, like, there's a lot, there's really these really cool Dutch angles, but they kind oh, of yeah. flow into other shots like beautifully. And Matt was like, doesn't it feel like very dreamlike? And he's right. Like the whole movie feels almost yeah. like you're watching a, a dream, like a waking nightmare. And I was like, yeah, it's super nice. fun, too. Is it in it's Italian awesome. or is it uh, like no? It's, it's typical it's... Giallo style, so everybody speaks English badly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the majority of the cast is dubbed, <laughs> so, okay. even when they don't need to be. <laughs> so, <laughs> like that could be, you know, like if you watch a bunch of Giallo movies, it's like par for the course with Argento's movies. You're like, this guy is clearly American. He's speaking American. 
but he sounds like a Martian speaking English. I don't <laughs> understand. And that's because every single person is dubbed. Usually you know when they make these giallos, they can cast anywhere from all over the globe, knowing they're going to just have the actor do the lines <laughs> in their native language and they're going right. to dub them anyway. Well, and that's Actually, why I've... Chinese movies do that now. There's like, I don't know if you do you guys watch a lot of Chinese films, but whenever they're no. like crackers, we need cracker actors. <laughs> they always get like these, regardless of where this character is supposed to be from. It's always like low budget Australian actors. So it's like <laughs> all from the Dude. UK. I love, like, no, I love that that's the advertisement. It's like they open backstage, you know, they're looking for an audition. It's like cracker actors needed. <laughs> all crackers. We don't give a for fuck Chinese about your production <laughs> for <Yeah>. H Brothers. <laughs> well, one of my favorite Argento movies because of the fact that I think the main actors in there are native English speaking folks is uh, Phenomena. With Jennifer Connelly oh, and Donald yes. Pleasant, we, we saw a trailer wanted for to this. See this. Yeah, it's awesome. And and oh, it I, is. You oh. know, Dar Dario Argento to me, I've really appreciated his impact on the industry, and I love Romero. So you have to have a little love for Argento there because you know they were, were so close. And I love like Two Evil Eyes, that movie they did together, uh, Romero and Argento. But my favorite movie, I couldn't get into Suspiria a lot. I couldn't get into a lot of his stuff with the bad dubbing because it it seemed so shitty. But Phenomena <laughs> is uh, at least the main characters, you know, they already speak English. So uh, their lines are delivered just fine. Now, of course, all the secondary supporting cast is dubbed yep. French, <laughs> French girls, uh, German girls, yeah. whatever. But uh, that's why I was curious about opera, because this was made after Phenomena. This is uh, late 80s. So I'm curious to see it how did, that dubbing. Yeah. It felt out. pretty natural, right? I mean, some of them you lose. Felt, you forget it. I mean, it's like yeah. Giallo's. You forget as you're watching. Like, it's weird at first. I think the only egregious person in opera was the little girl. Betty, you're so beautiful. <laughs> uh, that was like the one that I was like, oh, God, what's happening here? Everybody else, I just kind of forgot about it. <laughs> Nice. So, yeah, if this is playing at an Alamo near you, go get yourself some chips and yeah. queso and check out Dario Argento's opera. Make Don't sure get anything like with red stuff in it, though. Yeah, no red <laughs> stuff. <laughs> that, that goes without being said for an Argento movie anyway, right? Or Lucio yeah. Fulci. Just don't do it. Like, yeah. Just don't do it to yourself. No, no, no spaghetti jello. beforehand. Yeah. yeah. Don't serve <laughs> raviolis at the opera party. Um, Tommy, what's next for you, buddy? What's, uh, what's uh, up for you on Rex? So I, I came in with six today, so I got to choose from the remaining four right now. Um, I know that's where get, I'm at. I'm eyeing what I'm going to pick for my last one. And I it's think hard. I'm done, by the way, guys. So, Well, and you guys are doing like artistic, creative, beautifully shot. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do shit. that, though. Tom. Gargoyles you know, like... is not artistic, I want to say, for the record. <laughs> it's like, a very that's poor why, That's why film. we love Tommy, though, because he actually <laughs> thought that Gargoyles yeah. was like a good... Which Tommy is, will dig awesome. Gargoyles, I think. Well, and I, and I guess if it's not artistic, it's like seminal, you know, town that that dreaded sundown in the first Stan Winston movie. And, and I'm like, <laughs> Idle Hands is pretty good. It's got the quarterback from Little Giants. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to go for it anyway. Balls to the wall. One of my favorites in the franchise, which I love, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, oh, baby. Oh, man. What oh, man, I've never seen What that. a movie. Oh, dude. So... As far as the nightmare movies go, I love the first one. Uh, I love Wes Craven and his vision with that. And and Freddy's so serious in that movie. He's not yet silly. He's not dropping one-liners. This is the first movie where they really let Freddy walk and be uh, funny and and snarky and the kills and this and the dreams that he you know uh, dumps on these kids. The nightmares are all very like over the top and pervasive you know this one kid in the movie is in a wheelchair he's paralyzed and so freddie uses that as a device to to end him in his i, I won't give it away since you haven't seen it mark but well, i mean Street, it's so old feel free to spoil it so it's it's been out a little while yes um <laughs> it's worth it for some of the special effects wizardry market it's also one of the best in the nightmare franchise oh, i did during the, during the pandy yeah i did a whole nightmare in elm street rewatch uh, and I I ran the whole series and I was just so blown away, even in the even in the bad with the quote unquote bad ones like Dream Dream Child and, and Freddy's Dead. Like the effects are incredible in these. They're just like and, a showreel for physical effects. 
and Freddy Krueger is one of the most fun horror icons. Yeah, hundred I mean, percent. Nobody, nobody had more fun than Robert Englund playing this role. Uh, nobody brought their own charisma and 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 snarkiness to a horror character, except for maybe Brad Dorif as Chucky. Uh, that that Robert Englund brings to yeah. Freddy Krueger. And what's cool about this movie? So Robert Englund, I read his biography years ago, and uh, it's a fun read if you're a horror guy or a genre guy uh, or girl, a genre person. Uh, but anyway, Robert Englund said his favorite Nightmare on Elm Street was Wes Craven's new nightmare. He loved the meta for, fourth wall. I like it, too. Um, my Free favorite movie. is the original. But Englund did say, and I agree with him here. If you combined the plots and the stories from Nightmare 3 and Nightmare 4, that would be his favorite entry. So interesting. Three is a hard hitter for sure. Um, if if I had to get someone turned on to the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, this is the first one I'd show them is is Nightmare. Oh, really? 3. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, by the way, do you need to, to for to watch three? Do you need to watch the first two, or does it not matter? You really don't because the nope. first nightmare establishes a little bit of lore with who Freddy Krueger is and the whole, you know, the mechanism of how he's going to visit you in your dreams. But nightmare two completely goes off the rails. Yeah. And the, change. the lore is completely inconsistent, like from oh, movie okay. to movie. Yes. <laughs> like, and they, so for you, they fucking throw shit away willy nilly. It's like they forget about things they've established. Oh, yeah. Like, and <laughs> in three, they introduce things in three they never talked about. You know, they have. Amanda yeah. Kruger, which is Freddy Krueger's mom, and they say he's the uh, bastard child of a hundred maniacs, and that's the yes. first time they ever really explored that uh, lore. But Nightmare Three, yes, it's got some kind of ham-fisted, cheesy stuff, but it's not a B movie. It, the effects in it are top-notch. Yeah. Uh, the the kills in it, I mean, are still jarring. So that you know, the premise is it's these kids that are in a mental health ward because they're all having these crazy dreams about Freddy. And so all the adults and doctors are like, these kids just need some sleep and they're sexually repressed and rah. But really they're all having communal dreams about Freddy. And that's and actually a really cool premise. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 you know dope. what it reminds me of? It's almost like a, um, it's like an X-Men movie that happens to be a nightmare in Elm street movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that. It's like, like everyone it's like, has whoa. different powers. <laughs> yes. It's like an like... outcasts. It's like a group of outcasts with different abilities in the dream world and they yeah. team up to fight Freddy. It's it's fucking awesome. I think that's, that's actually cool. <laughs> I've, never, I've never looked at it that way before, but that's spot on because, you know, you've got Kincaid, who's like the tough guy. Yes. He's like the Hulk or the thing or something like that. And, and, I, and I can't hear I can't hear Kincaid's name without saying Kruger Pussy. <laughs> Kruger, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and the only thing I will say I don't like about Nightmare 3 is uh it's a very early, maybe even her first film role uh for Patricia Arquette. And that girl has the loudest screams I've ever heard <laughs> in a movie. Like she screams from the belly. You can hear yeah. that shit. And <laughs> Your they neighbors are going to love this, Mark. They're going to love it. Oh, God. Yeah. My walls are so fucking thin. It's like, he's killing another poor young lady again. <laughs> That's eight this week in October alone. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's super fun, though. Uh, some of some of my favorite imagery from the entire franchise, when the when the kid is walking and he's being puppeteered to walk off the rooftop yes. of the uh, you know mental hospital, uh, one of the best uses of effects and and horror visuals in the whole in the whole franchise it's just an awesome movie welcome to prime time bitch yeah it's got to be up there for me yeah your big your big break on tv and then he slams her (laughs) into the fucking tv so good such a good pick Uh, you know what's funny about that scene is uh they have a, a a little snippet of the dick cavett show and uh zaza gabor is on it and i guess dick cavett hated her and he didn't want to do that scene with her. But when they told him, well, we're going to have you turn into Freddy and like kill her, even though you don't see that in the movie, that's what made Dick Cavett go, oh, yeah, I'll do that. That's sweet. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love shit like that. Yeah. That's fucking great. Uh, so there you go. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. All right. I'm going to I'm going to close us out here. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give a random one. I'm going to give a random one. I, w- I won't go into my TV pick. Um, I'm going to go into a random one. So uh, in addition to. Uh, the live action horror movies I've been watching every year. I try to watch a little Halloween animation. I love animated Halloween specials. A couple years ago, I did all the tree houses of horror. Um, this year I'm trying to find 
other animated Halloween stuff that is not Treehouse of Horror. And I did just watch, it's very weird, but I want to I wanna talk about it a bit, is I watched The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Yeah. Pay no attention to the Mr. Toad part. This yeah, is what's weird. Toad. <laughs> so I loved the Mr. Toad ride when I went to Disneyland. And I was like, there's a movie? I want to watch it. And I only watched... The half, it's a bifurcated movie. So one half is Mr. Toad, one half is Ichabod Crane's Sleepy Hollow. And I had only watched the Mr. Toad portion and I thought it was terrible. Like the ride is so much better than the movie. The movie sucks. The Mr. Toad story deserves so much better. I maintain that. I had never watched the Sleepy <laughs> Hollow per- version. I love uh, Mark's portion. reaction. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I can't believe he's taking this seriously. I am. So this week I was like, oh shit, that shitty Mr. Toad movie has a Sleepy <laughs> Hollow animated bit like the famous disney animated bit is in that movie so we watched finally the adventures of ichabod which is basically sleepy hollow in its original 1949 animated form oh that's cool it's awesome it, it's only <laughs> like 26 <laughs> minutes in it? i've wanted yeah it's a ba- basil rathbone I um love that guy. it's i want to say 40 sure 35 are. 40 minutes uh okay. it's it's really cool it's very weird it's not what you think but i i say that in a positive way i think because i have just i just watched the tim burton sleepy hollow which has become like the definitive sleepy hollow for me uh-huh. and i was kind of expecting to go over the same story beats the animated movie does not do that um the animated movie is very different. It like takes its time establishing who Ichabod is. It's very funny. It makes fun of him. And then in that crazy dark Disney way, with like maybe 15 minutes left, they're like, Haha, we're having a good time. Everybody's having a good yeah. time laughing at Ichabod. <laughs> Holy shit, his life's about to get fucked. Yeah, nightmare, <laughs> and nightmare here comes fuel. Nightmare fuel. Here comes the Headless Horseman. And... Dude, when Disney does shit scary in their animations, especially in this golden era, it fucking works. The Headless Horseman animation is incredible. The tone, the mood, everything changes. Uh, I don't know what they did if they remastered it for 4K. Everything on Disney Plus says 4K. I don't know how much of that I believe. This looked in fucking credible. Like animation always looks good in, in a high de- in a high def uh, format, but this looked amazing and the ending is truly chilling like i don't think they intended it to be as scary as it comes off and it it got me like hold on yeah. i'm gonna write this down now it's fucking <laughs> excellent but just so you it's know good. mark you are in for if you just want to watch the sleepy hollow portion when you start the movie it starts with mr toad so you're gonna have to fast forward the mr toad bit and it's very clear when that bit's over because the movie has a framing device which is like you're in a library like a live action library and a guy takes oh, okay. a book off the shelf, Mr. Toad. Okay. The next time you see him, he'll put that book on the shelf and grab the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. That's when you start the movie. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And you cool. know, what's cool about this too is uh, <laughs> in the first, like you were saying, Matt, the first two thirds of it, it's like Bing Crosby singing. And you're like, wow, we're having a fucking gay <laughs> yes, time right yes. now. <laughs> and then it just gets dark as hell. And, you know, I always loved the uh, the Sleepy Hollow story. When I was a kid, that and King Arthur were like my shit. And yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'm from this- the New York area. So I actually got to go to that place. Oh, nice. And it's fucking creep we went there when it was foggy so it, it's very creepy that's perfect oh that's it, like perfect lives up to its name <laughs> yeah this, this is good this is a fun pick I, i'd say that for me at least this is another like this is a sunday morning watch while you're having breakfast and you know it's like a horror cartoon dude we had finished dinner and we had like we've been re-watching just we are not re-watching we've been watching justified for the first time so we just had finished season five and i was like okay I love me some Justified, but I'm happy it's over because I got Halloween shit I got to watch. And I was like, I don't know why, but I was like, I'm really, I think because we just went to Disneyland and we just watched Sleepy Hollow. I was like, I want to see that goddamn animated Headless Horseman. I want to watch that fucking Sleepy Hollow. We watched it like 1030 at night. We had our fucking balcony doors open. So (laughs) you could just hear the outside world. And it was, it was just kind of this amazing coincidence of events where, where I live, the sprinklers go on at a certain time and I always <laughs> oh, forget nice. about it. I always forget about it. And like, what the fuck was that? Oh, dude, it's, it's dead fucking quiet. <laughs> Bing Crosby singing. Everybody's having a good time. The movie starts to get dark when the headless horseman appears on the covered bridge. All of a sudden, like there's a moment where Ichabod's looking for him and you don't see him and you know, he's going to pop out. 
and I'm talking like a millisecond before he popped, you just heard oh, all outside my window. And I was like, what the fuck? And then the headless horseman <laughs> appeared on screen and it was perfect. It's perfect like those, uh, it's like those jets of air at HHN. Yes. Yes. It was just like that. It scared the bejesus out of us. So PT- like, you have PTSD from that. I think this could definitely work as a Sunday morning pick, but I'm going to tell you. I think it also works as a late night pick, especially if you're not expecting it. No, you're not expecting it to be as scary as it is. Like it, it okay, gets dark yeah. and weird and it's Ooh. awesome. I'll watch you, it tonight, actually. You think it's going to be more cutesy and, and it's it's really not that cute. Uh, yeah, maybe. I think it's because they spend so much time with the cutesy stuff and the Bing Crosby and making you comfortable <laughs> that they really it really feels like they're pulling the rug out from under you when the shit goes down and the horseman comes. Yeah, like the other it's foot fucking falls. crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. a good pick, though. I I try and squeeze this in every year. I love the stuff that's under an hour, so you can same put it between shit. Watch, you know, one of the things actually that I watch uh, maybe every horathon is I watch all of the episodes or most of Are You Afraid of the Dark, and they have a headless horseman episode that's one of the best. Oh shit! Oh. All, right, uh, all right, I'm gonna write that down because I actually want to watch that. Yeah, and I'll, dude, I'll DM you what season and episode. Yes, it please. Is, I just, I think it's season three, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll DM you the deets, and then you can, you can tell your listeners. But I don't have that info on me now. So, no problem. No yeah. problem. Um, yeah, man. Also, by the way, if you're a Disney Plus guy and you're looking for Halloween animations, they've remastered a lot of their classic vault stuff, like Lonesome Ghosts, The Skeleton Dance, Trick or Treat. So they're all there. You have access to the all of the Disney Halloween shorts. Uh, from the 40s and 50s, and they're definitely oh, worth checking cool. out. So I'm actually going to watch Trick or Treat and uh, Lonesome Ghosts tonight. Nice. Trick or uh-huh. Treat, that's that's like, uh, that's like a heavy hitter of yours, right? Like, are you watching it? Oh, no, I'm sorry. One? That's not Trick or Treat, which is like, mm. that's like that's like in my icon. That's like my pa- my pantheon of icons. That's I'm what saving I that. No, I'm saving that for a little closer to the holiday. This is Trick or Treat. Uh, which is an animated Halloween uh, film, like a short film from Disney, I want to say in the 50s. It looks like Donald Duck is in it, and it looks really cool. It's like all about trick-or-treaters and dressing up, but it looks kind of fucked up, like their costumes look really old and weird. Nice. <laughs> so I'm going to catch awesome. that and uh, Lonesome Ghosts, which is uh, like a ghost-busting one with Mickey, Goofy, and Donald uh, as ghosts start to uh, invade their house. Oh, that's awesome. Well, yeah, now yeah, I might have to look for both of those myself. Fuck yeah, Great. dude. They're, I, I'm hoping they got the same visual treatment that uh, Ichabod did. Oh, um, so there you go. I think that's it for us for Rex. We'll cap it there at three. We got a main show to get to. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for this. We're out of here. Peace. Peace.